cultural backlash is a backlash against huge cultural changes that have occurred since the World War II. There was an up phase and a down phase, basically, for about 30 years. There was a shift toward liberal and progressive values. This was linked with uh, the unprecedented economic and physical security, of course, what we were the economic miracle was rising, GNP per capita, social welfare states, absence of war, which led to the emergence of all kinds of cultural changes, a labor line, the other for states, which rise in post materialist values, which were a very big change. That's led to the notion that survival is immensely important for us, the top of the world is. And if survival is threatened, that dominates your lifestyle. You're not even aware of it, you know, you grow up thinking survival is insecure against your gardens and folded semi closed ranks against dangerous outsiders. The opposite is. Most materials will take this in all the way, which is an unusual problem. But in most of the history, most people grew up feeling insecure because they were in history of starvation. So in most of the history, population would rise to meet the supply and be you know, transferred by starvation, disease, war, violence. So that the prevailing output was for the insecure. Most materialists took survival to which open up all kinds of additional options for students have many, many options of many values which if you're starving, they take second place. If you taste starvation is never happens. You're more outward looking, tolerant, more open to new ideas, and uh, tend to be more trusting and in general. What happened was a way of change after the world war. It actually took place with the generation below. The generation four men of these nations were fully below when they were five or ten years old. They became politically relevant around the late 60s and early 70s with the wave of student protest that by the gender equality, environmental protection, and that war with its topics of outsiders, politics of foreigners, gays and lesbians. Big cultural revolution, which has happened, then sort of almost like Newton's laws of reaction was being a positive reaction. It was from the start a reaction, people who have traditional values, felt threatened by this big cultural change of gender equality, tolerance of foreigners, tolerance of gays and lesbians, all kinds of things. And it was a reaction initially. The main change for a long time, for about 30 years, was toward rising gender equality and violence and so on. In the last 40 years, something different has happened. The economy has been hollowed out by an unexpected consequence of the knowledge society. This is the knowledge society is a wonderful thing, but the inherently is a very national system to the economy. You have emerging, the cost of production comes down to zero. So, whereas there are many niches from the cheap automobiles that they are, in the large economy, you only need the Ferrari. It costs almost nothing to reproduce copies of Microsoft. And so, the top product takes over the entire market. And you get Jeff Bezos, head of Amazon, the rich and poor richest man. Uh, with his company alone doing half a walk in the retail sales. It's a gigantic prize for the top. But it's how we want this to be done. The economy superficially is doing quietly. GMP is high. But it's creating insecure jobs. The new jobs are mostly going to be the economy, whether it's hairdressers or waiters or security jobs. And in the long run, this following of the planet has led to growing insecurity, which has this predictable consequence of insecurity tends toward, toward darkness, etc. 
So we had a growing wave of xenophobia. And the intolerance and cultural polarization of the land was solved. This has led to something, since my time is very short. I'd like to zero in on one breath that's so stunning that can we, and that's all we've done in my last talk, I've never talked about this, but here we go. Come back. This is an example of polarization. In a paper that I'll present Tuesday, I point out that authoritarianism, which is a concept that's been around a long time, it's evolved. The original formulation, I think, has been superseded by the notion. Is there such a thing as authoritarian personality? That is a real phenomenon that's been with us more or less forever. The paper that I'll present points out that post materialism is the opposite point of authoritarianism. The authoritarian personality is the effort to explain the fascist reaction of the 1930s. Post materialism evolved in the 1970s and was like, wow, prosperity is due to a cultural revolution in the exact opposite direction. This is, we tested it out, empirically we used the revised version of authoritarian personality, still later developed one by one, and used this in a survey of the US developing countries, including Mexico and the and we, the hypothesis was post materialism all along is the opposite pole of authoritarianism to a degree that left me hugely relieved when I saw it because I'd sold my colleagues on doing these surveys on the theory that this was true. It turns out that post materialism is indeed using my classic post materialism value uh, it, it fits in as. One of the clearly opposite poles from authoritarianism. This is a stunning example of how this ties into politics. This is Bessiles on the authoritarianism, post materialist dimension, measured in a survey carried out in uh, last fall in the United States, with people reporting their vote for Trump. Among the most authoritarian group, 92% voted for Trump. Among the most post materialist group, slightly more than zero. It's a stunning, I mean, I've never seen survey data who said a stunning result. And conversely, Clinton, among the most authoritarian uh, group on the scale, 8% voted for Clinton. Among the most post materialist, Almost 100 percent in survey data. You don't find this. I mean, I've never seen anything. My wife couldn't believe it. Uh, but this is how they work. I have to confess the individual level correlation is only 0.57. That's stunningly big correlation between the survey data. This eliminates the measurement error, which is a major problem with survey data, by grouping it in a decimal. The random answering in one direction cancels the random answering in another direction. So, what we find is why do you put it in a test size? We have about 130 people in this test size. You get this stunningly strong 0.97 correlation between this authoritarian and post materialist dimension, which has no mention of party identification or cover anything. It's a completely personality and Personality affected by such situation. You can imagine, and it has this incredibly strong correlation. So, bottom line, we're in a situation in the US where there's a tremendous cultural polarization. If you're at the authoritarian end, you don't believe anything that the other side says. There is a total cultural polarization where you shut out what the other side says to a degree that it's never happened before. Follow this over time, and we reached this sort of peak in the 2016 election. Never before has the country been so 